Hello everyone, this is our second video in Safety Criteria for Active Mobilization of Critically Ill ICU Patients series. In this video, we will be talking in detail about cardiovascular considerations while mobilizing ICU patients. So we will begin with our first cardiovascular consideration that is blood pressure. Blood pressure above 140-90 mmHg is considered as hypertension. So patients on intravenous antihypertensive therapy are strictly contraindicated for any activity whether in or out of the bed. Second cardiovascular consideration under blood pressure is mean arterial pressure. It is generally the average of systolic and diastolic pressure. Its normal target range is from 75 to 105 millimeters of mercury but it may vary in critically ill patients. If mean arterial pressure are below its target range, then it may lead to signs of poor perfusion such as cold and clammy skin, decrease or absent peripheral pulses. If mean arterial pressure is below its target range and causing symptoms either with or without pharmacological or mechanical support, then patients should be mobilized within the bed under sufficient medical supervision or patients should be strictly contraindicated to move out of the bed. And if mean arterial pressure is greater than its lower limit, either with no support or with low level support, then patient can be mobilized in and out of the bed with no precautions. Patients having mean arterial pressure greater than the lower limit of the target range but with moderate level support can be mobilized in and out of the bed with sufficient supervision whereas patients receiving high level support but their MAP is greater than the lower limit should be mobilized under supervision within the bed but are strictly contraindicated to mobilize out of the bed. Low, moderate or high level of pharmacological support is decided by the medical team only. Last cardiovascular consideration under this category is known or suspected pulmonary hypertension. In general, having pulmonary artery hypertension reflects increase in cardiac workload. Such patients should be mobilized under sufficient medical supervision whether within or out of the bed. Any mobilization in such patient will increase their cardiac workload because there are chances that such patients may go into congestive heart failure with continued physical activities. Second cardiovascular consideration is cardiac arrhythmias, bradycardia, which is heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. Patients requiring pharmacological treatment or emergency pacemaker insertion for bradycardia, such patients should not be mobilized at all. Whereas, patient does not requiring any pharmacological treatment or any emergency pacemaker insertion can be mobilized under sufficient medical supervision. Next is stable tachycardia or tachyarrhythmia. Tachycardia simply means heart rate above 100 beats per minute. Patients having ventricular rate from 100 to 120 beats per minute can be mobilized safely within and out of the bed. Whereas, patients having ventricular rate starting from 120 to 150 beats per minute can be mobilized under sufficient medical supervision and patients having ventricular rate higher than 150 beats per minute should be mobilized under sufficient medical supervision within the bed and should not be mobilized at all out of the bed. Physiotherapist can identify ventricular rate either by looking at the ECG or by looking at the rhythm strip on the monitor. Last parameter under this category is presence of transvenous or epicardial pacemaker. If patient on pacemaker has a stable intrinsic rhythm, then such patients can be mobilized safely within and out of the bed. Whereas patients having dependent rhythms, that is patient entirely dependent on pacemaker activity. If pacemaker activity is cessated, then such patients may have significant symptoms or may even have cardiac arrest. So such patients should be mobilized within the bed under sufficient medical supervision and should not be mobilized out of the bed at all. Third cardiovascular consideration is presence of any mechanical devices such as IABP, intra-aortic balloon pump, ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenator or 
प्रेजेंस ऑफ पल्मरी आर्टरी कैथेटर फेमोरल इंट्रा आयोटिक बैलून पम्प इट इज़ ए पोर्टेबल डिवाइस विच लुक्स लाइक मैकेनिकल वेंटिलेटर इट इज़ यूज इन एक्यूट लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकुलर फेलियर इन दिस ए कैथेटर इज इंसर्टेड इन टू फेमोरल आर्टरी एंड गाइडेड अप टिल द लेवल ऑफ डिसेंडिंग आयोटा सो पेशेंट्स ऑन आई ए बी पी कैन बी मोबलाइज सेफली विद इन द बेड बट स्पेशल कंसर्न शुड बी गिवन टू अवॉइड एनी हिप फ्लैक्शन ऑन द साइड इन विच फेमोरल कैथेटर हैज बिन इंसर्टेड बिकॉज एनी हिप फ्लैक्शन ऑन द साइड इन विच फेमोरल कैथेटर इज इंसर्टेड विल कॉज किंकिंग ऑफ द कैथेटर दैट विल कॉम्प्रोमाइज द फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द आई ए बी पी सो प्रिकॉशन शुड बी टेकन टू अवॉइड एनी हिप फ्लैक्शन or to modify exercise of the affected side in which femoral catheter is inserted extra corporeal membrane oxygenator or otherwise called as extra corporeal life support it is primarily used in severe oxygenation or ventilation problems which are unlikely to be treated by other conventional methods in ecmo blood is taken from a major vein through a catheter which connects into a oxygenator where blood gets oxygenated and that oxygenated blood then again sent back to the body through a different catheter mobilization in ecmo depends on the two approaches of ecmo one is double site and another one is single site in single site approach the blood is taken and then sent back to the same vein which is usually the central vein most commonly it is jugular vein whereas in double side approach two veins are approached one is femoral and another one is subclavian when it comes to mobilization double side approach is cumbersome as compared to single side approach within bed mobilization is safe for both double as well as for single side approach whereas with single side approach out of the bed mobilization can be done cautiously but it is strictly contraindicated in case of double site approach next is presence of pulmonary artery catheter which can be seen wrapped around the head of the patient or presence of any other continuous cardiac monitoring devices with presence of such cardiac monitoring devices patient can be mobilized within the bed safely but patient should be cautiously taken out of the bed because any out of the bed mobilization may dislocate or may cause problem in recording or in interpretation of the readings fourth cardiovascular consideration include other cardiovascular parameters which include shock shock from any cause with lactate concentration of above 4 millimole per liter lactate is the by product of anaerobic metabolism normal lactate concentration in our blood is below 2 millimole per liter in critically ill patient it becomes more than 2 next is presence of known or suspected acute deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism acute dvt or pulmonary embolism that is pulmonary embolism within the 24 hours time they both are hemodynamically unstable condition any exertion may further aggravate the hemodynamic instability so patients having acute pulmonary embolism or dvt should be mobilized under sufficient medical supervision and it is advisable to the physiotherapist to have a look at the pt inr report and just make sure that your patient is on any anticoagulant therapy next is presence of severe aortic stenosis through aortic valve whole cardiac output goes to the body any narrowing of this valve causes compromise in the cardiac output so such patients with severe narrowing of the aortic valve can be mobilized safely within the bed but should be mobilized out of the bed with sufficient medical supervision because any activity may further aggravate the symptoms such as light headedness or syncope last cardiovascular parameter in this category is cardiac ischemia which is evident on ongoing chest pain or on ekg changes so any patient with chest pain which is central and squeezing in nature and which further increases on physical activity or patients having ongoing chest pain having evident ecg changes like st segment depression of more than 2 mm so such patients with cardiac ischemia 
can be mobilized safely within the bed but should not be mobilized at all out of the bed. So at the end I would like to conclude that if mobilization may bring potential benefits while at the same time it may bring potential risks too. So it is up to the treating physical therapist to assess for himself or herself any potential risk mentioned. And our upcoming video will be on the neurological consideration while mobilizing ICU patients. So keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.